Hello children, welcome to my channel English Classes. Please like and subscribe for more. Let's get started. Today we'll read lesson number one of New Pathways English Reader. Lesson number one, the Toda and the Tahar. What was that? Kamos asked sharply. His dog Cooch growled. They both listened intently. The boy and his dog were on the ledge of a mountain side, were jutted into space. At their feet lay a chasm deep and frightening. As they stood listening, the call was repeated. It was a cry of distress and it was becoming fainter. But it was enough to tell Camus that the sound came from the narrow strip of jungle between two cliffs. Camus, closely followed by Cooch, rushed down a steep rocky path towards the sound. He had to be careful. One false step would send him hurtling down the precipice that bordered the track. The small wood they entered was damp and dark. Camus had to slow down and grope about in the gloom. When his eyes had adjusted to the dim light, he saw a young Nilgiri Tahir caught in a snare. The animal gave a last feeble bleat, stopped struggling and lay still. Camus thought it was dead. The wire of the snare had cut deeply into its neck and the animal was bleeding over the animal. There was no visible injury, though. He could feel its heart pounding rapidly. He sat beside the animal and loosened the snare gently. The kid gulped in air in great gasp. Camus carried it to a small spring. There he bathed the young Tahir, wound and dressed it with leaves of plants which he had seen his people use to heal wounds. Look after a young friend, Camus ordered his dog. Then he searched the strip of forest for more snares. Sure enough, there were three more. They were cunningly set on hunting trails used by Tahir crossing from one section of the cliff to the other. The snare would pass over the neck or body of an animal that walked through it and hold it. As the trapped animal struggled to free itself, the noose would tighten, leading to its death. If the snare caught it round the body or a leg, it would starve to death. It was a cruel way to capture animals. Camus was furious. Camus knew who were the culprits. They were tribals who lived in the jungle below and were hunters and trappers. Camus wondered how they had found their way there. He did not know of any track leading over the cliffs into the jungle below. Then he remembered seeing a party of hunters on the cliff line some days ago. He wished he had followed them to find out what they were doing. He tore the snares from the trees to which they were anchored and threw them down a cliff where no one could reach them. The cry of the young Tahir in distress had attracted others beside camels. One of the hunter tribe who happened to be hunting in the jungle below heard it. They hurried to claim their prize. The strip of forest where Camus found the trapped Tahir fell away abruptly. Camus stood there wondering how the hunters planned to visit their traps. Cautiously, he moved forward to investigate. At his feet lay a well-plated rope made of cane. It reached down to the jungle below, which at this point was not far away. As Camus watched, the rope suddenly came to life.
and wriggled like a snake. He leaned forward to have a better look and in doing, almost tumbled over. Two hunters were climbing up the side of the precipice with the help of the rope and one of them had almost reached the top. The man's finger groped for a handhold to pull himself up. He glared into the boy's eyes, trying to frighten him into inaction. Camo's blood froze. Suddenly, he remembered the wood-cutting knife he had in his hand. He made as if to cut the rope. Now it was the hunter's turn to be frightened. Shouting a warning to his companion, he slid down the rope as rapidly as possible. Camos waited until the men were about a dozen feet from the ground and then cut the rope. As they fell, he warned them, This should teach you a lesson. To make sure that the poachers would not use their shortcut to the plateau, for some time, Camos cut down the trees and plants that were likely to serve as a support for a rope ladder. While he was busy, the young Tahir regained consciousness. When he opened its eyes, what should it see but a large, fierce-looking dog staring at it? The young animal took fright. It decided that the best thing to do was to lie still and behave as though it were dead, a tactic used by some wild animals. It lay still until Camos returned. Camos was not sure how the young Tahir would be received. He was in the habit of taking abandoned creatures home. Todas are fond of wild animals and do not harm them, preferring to see them in the wild. Every time Camos took some animal to Mofant, his home, the last one, a Sambur fawn, whose mother had been killed by a leopard. He was asked to take it back and release it. Even with Cooch, there was much opposition. When Camos reached home with the Tahir, his mother objected, saying that another pet would be a nuisance. Camos pointed to the wound of the young animal's neck and asked, Do you want me to feed him to the jackals? If you want to keep him, get an elder's permission, his mother, his mother ordered. He lived at the far end. He was a kind and understanding old man. Camos approached him and saluted him in the manner that was customary among Todas. Saluting over, Camos told Coden about the Tahir kid's rescue. Although the Todas and Tahar had shared the Nilgiri plateau for centuries, they had never made close contact. The boy seemed so eager that Gordon did not have the heart to disappoint him. You did right by rescuing the animal, he said. Look after it well and let it join its heart when its wound has healed. Camo's work was herding buffaloes, calves, it was a full-time occupation. The Todas are a pastoral people. Their life is centered around their buffalo herds. Camus worried that he might not be able to look after the Tahir kid properly. Fortunately, Simil, his cousin, offered to look after it in his absence. She was equally fond of animals. Greatly relieved, Camus was able to devote time to his usual work. Treated under the guidance of Camus' father, the young Tahir would heal fast. During this period, Camus kept the Tahir kid in the closed pen along with buffalo calves. Soon the Tahir kid made friends with its companions. The sounds and smells and the presence of people did not frighten it anymore. It soon became very tame with camels and simul and played with them. Long before, camels was able to let it out whenever he was around and the kid made no attempt to run away. Instead, 
it began following camus wherever he went by e r c devidar so that's all for today please like and subscribe my channel thank you